This is the third in a series of videos on STP. The first two are spanning tree justification and spanning tree operation. This video will look at the different versions of STP. The original version of STP took a long time to converge and did not permit an efficient use of the physical resources, since one port in every loop could not be used. The original STP provided a single spanning tree that would be used for all VLANs. Per VLAN spanning tree protocol and rapid PVST plus permit all ports to be used by having a separate spanning tree for each VLAN. Each spanning tree can use a different route, so there might be some ports that are used by all VLANs and others that will only be used by one or another subset of VLANs, but all ports will be used. Suppose there were 10 switches and 100 VLANs in a given network. At most, there could be only 10 spanning trees, each with a different switch as the root switch. Multiple spanning tree protocol helps conserve resources by having only 10 STP calculations rather than the 100 that would be used by rapid STP+. Each spanning tree topology would be an instance of a spanning tree calculation. Another problem with the original STP is its slow convergence time. Our STP, rapid PFC, PVST Plus and MSTP were all designed to overcome this problem. We will look at each of these protocols in more detail on the following slides. The illustration on this slide shows an example of how all links can be used in PVST Plus. You can see that S3 is the root switch for VLAN 20 and S1 is the root switch for VLAN 10. Both ports on the link between them transmit data from both VLANs. S2's FA03 port is the switch's root port and hence a forwarding port for VLAN 20, but it is a blocking port for VLAN 10. Therefore, only VLAN 20 data will use S2's FA0-3. S2's FA0-2 port is the switch's root port and hence a forwarding port for VLAN 10, but it is a blocking port for VLAN 20. Therefore, only VLAN 10 data will use S2's FA0-2 port. Rapid spanning tree protocol is also called 802.1w. I remember this by thinking of Elmer Fudd saying, rapid STP. It's a silly mnemonic, but it works. Rapid PVST Plus is a Cisco proprietary per VLAN version of RSTP. The Cisco IOS does not implement the 802.1 version of Rapid STP. It only implements its pr proprietary per VLAN version. Therefore, when you're configuring the STP mode in the IOS, you would use the command spanning tree mode RSTP to have the device use Rapid PVST+. As their names imply, Rapid STP and Rapid PVST Plus were designed with rapid convergence in mind. RSTP was also designed to be backwardly compatible with the traditional STP, the 802.1D. It uses the same BPDU structure with the exception of putting 2 instead of 0 in the version field. The difference between these protocols is not with the communication between switches, so much as with the processing within each switch. RSTP uses different port roles and states than traditional STP and uses timers differently. RSTP achieves rapid convergence in part with the creation of a new port type, edge ports. An edge port is a port that is not connected to another switch. Typically, it will be connected to a PC or a router. The idea is that if there's no switch at the other end, the port cannot possibly participate in an, a layer two loop. So there's no need for any spanning tree calculations to be done for it. It is immediately determined to be a forwarding port. To tell a switch that a particular port should be considered an edge port, enter the spanning tree port fast command in interface mode. What happens if a switch is in fact connected on the other end of a link from a port fast port? A logical loop could form with all the problems inherent therein. To avoid this, you can configure BPDU guard on the port fast port. A BPDU guard enabled port that receives a BPDU will immediately transition into an error disabled state 
and will act as if it is shut down until an administrator brings the port up again. The port states in the original STP and in PVST Plus were as seen in the middle column of this table. Ports with the shutdown command configured are disabled. Before a port can transition into a forwarding state, it first enters a listening state during which it determines the best path to the route. It will then enter either the blocking or the learning state. In the latter, it will start to build its MAC address table. The amount of time it spends in the listening and learning states is determined by timers, and the switch will not transmit user data during either of these states. At the end of the learning state, it will then transition to the forwarding state, the only one in which user data is transmitted. The rapid protocols conflate the blocking, listening, and disabled states into a single discarding state. In the point-to-point -point configuration, there are only two switches on a link. As soon as they exchange BPDUs, they can determine which one has the best path from their shared link to the root switch, and the appropriate switch can immediately set its port into the designated state, thereby avoiding having to deal with the timers necessary with traditional STP or with the shared link. We'll typically only have a shared link when dealing with a hub, a type of equipment that has been considered legacy for some time. In this video, we looked at different versions of STP. In the next video, we will look at configuring STP.